I wrote a nice simulator, and the first time I tried to get some real data out of it, uh, it uh, soaked up all of the uh, university's mainframe for a while. I mean, Chris Nugo invented object-oriented programming in Simula. I, I tried to use Simula yeah, for my work in, in Cambridge and got rather good at that kind of uh, work long before it was popular. It didn't work too well, though. I wrote a nice simulator, and the first time I tried to get some real data out of it, uh, it uh, soaked up all of the uh, university's mainframe for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, grad students just don't get to do that twice. Um, <laughs> okay. Once they catch you and they're told never to do that again. So I moved my work to a, another computer, uh, actually one that David Wheeler had built, uh, which had hardware capabilities, all this uh, hardware support for safety and such that people talk so much about today. Uh, we had it uh, back in the mid 70s. Uh, I see. And um, anyway, I worked on that. And the good thing about that machine was one, it was fast. And two, the support was so lousy that uh, the physicists and the chemists and astronomers couldn't get, use it. So I got it to myself. I think I, <laughs> I, used, I used that machine more than anybody else put together. And um, the problem was I couldn't use this nice and elegant language uh, simulator. Uh, which I loved and I learned to love. Uh, but it, it was useless for uh, me. I couldn't use it on a machine I could afford and it didn't run on a machine that I could afford. So I had to rewrite my code in BCPL, which was extraordinarily painful. Uh, BCPL makes uh, C look like a high level language. Oh, okay. And, um, <laughs> Anyway, but I, I got my programs written, I got my data, and I got my PhD, it worked. But I was very convinced that I would never again attack a problem with tools as insufficient for the task as Simula and BCPL, the two languages I had done to succeed with. Uh, and then I came to Cambridge, and I, and I came to um, Bell Labs, and they, they gave me a splendid deal. Uh, they basically said, here's an office, here's some computers, you've got some good colleagues, uh, do something interesting and uh, tell us what it was in a year's time. If we like that, uh, you get the same deal again. And okay. I kept the deal till I left Bell Labs. Literally nobody ever told me what to do because that oh, was a deal. Cool. You didn't get to be told what to do if you made them happy. Uh, over yes. the previous year. Um, anyway, so uh, like like many people coming off a PhD, they decide they really want to build what they were thinking about for their PhD. So I wanted to build a uh, distributed computer. I wanted to build which, if I had succeeded, would have been the world's first Unix cluster. And, okay. Um, yeah, in, uh, in, in, in 1980 or thereabouts. And uh, I was going to have a flexible uh, communication infrastructure so that I could use um, shared memory if I had it and I didn't need it if I didn't and such. And I needed two things. I needed to analyze the problems and I needed to build the stuff. And very soon I realized I couldn't do it. <laughs> 